and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I am looking at a casual geographic video. This one is the candid affairs of the canine family. So we gonna be talking about dogs, I guess. I'm okay with this. I love dogs. I have no idea what he's going to be telling me about them that will make me horrified, though, because usually there's at least one thing to make me horrified. And this one didn't have like a uh, it'll make you smile sort of note on it. So I don't know where he's going to go with this, but I can't wait to find out. So let us begin. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Hello, stranger. I apologize for my outrage. When from the hood meets from the wood. No word said, but he understood. Blood realized he is not that guy. What y'all know All about right, it? great. Okay, so we talking about wolves v. dogs then. I, yeah, it always, it, it's incredible how huge wolves are. They're so big. Timber wolf. Also known as the Northwestern Wolf of Alaska and Canada, the timber wolf is arguably the largest wolf walking the earth and at a length of up to seven feet and a max weight of over 150 pounds. If you're oh, I'm sorry. A husky when you see a wolf, your expectation is going to be subverted like the Titanic. Now this is a fennec fox and at an honest three pounds, the sand chihuahua weighs about as much as the MacBook I'm editing this on. But That's fair. But fennec foxes are David Tennant apparently, so... But oh my god, I didn't realize, I knew they were big, I just didn't, it did not clock, but seven feet. Wow. Both fennec foxes and lupus final boxes you can ride are two that. ends of the canine spectrum. And today, I'm going to try to talk about every canine coated creature out there. Before cool. Before I do. Cool, because he's done this with cats and stuff, so this will be fun, I get one with dogs. I should probably address something. I made a video on the top 10 most misunderstood animals, and I honestly don't know how I yapped for almost 17 minutes and didn't once mention wolves. Forget top 10, there might not be five animals we've gotten more wrong about. First things Aww. first, there's no alpha wolf, it doesn't exist, I will fight you. The thing is, the guy that came up with alpha wolf did so in a book after watching wolves in captivity. David Meck would then spend the rest of his career trying to take it back, imploring people not to buy the book and even trying to get printing presses to stop publishing it. But like a drunk Friday night tattoo, the alpha thing's stuck no matter how hard it's you try to scrub it off. In real life, the wolf pack is just a Family. The two alphas are really just the two parents, and the rest are just generations of the kids that haven't left to make their own pack yet. And because I know a certain demographic is going to try to fight me on that, I'm going to say this. When the term alpha male was first used academically in 1921 by Monica Sumra, she wasn't talking about wolves. She was talking about chickens. A literal pecking order. Not even like roosters. I'm pretty sure she was on about vindictive hens. I'm just not <laughs> But yeah, alpha wolves don't exist. At least not in the wild. I'm sure if you take a bunch of wolves that don't know each other and put them behind a fence, pack politics will look a little different. But that's kind of like writing a book on human nature based on studying folks in max security. And unlike prison, a wolf pack is actually structured to avoid Fair. fighting. As a rule, you usually get five to nine wolves in a pack. And because nature hates rules, in 2011, there was a pack of 400-something wolves terrorizing the town of... Verkoyunk? Yonks. Verkoyunks. Verkoyunks. I'm gonna say Verkoyunk. Oh, that's what I said. Hey, I like it when he and I are on the same page with pronunciations. Where they allegedly murked 30 Rikoyans, horses maybe? in four days. That's yeah, crazy. only in Russia. The alpha thing's not the only thing we've gotten wrong about wolves. We've been doing them dirty for decades. Like that time we thought wolves are pests when actually... You remember when I said nature's like a Jenga tower and some animals are the block that can bring it all down? The op of Riding Hood is a keystone species that stabilizes the ecosystem. We know that because after humanity went ahead and wiped wolves off the Yellowstone census, Whoops. the elk started wilding and eating... Yep, I heard about this one. And then they parachuted wolves in. All the plants, the songbirds and beavers that needed the plants went ghosts, and without beavers, everything was damned. Not to mention, the one animal people arguably hated more ran through America. But we'll get to that. All that and wolves actually kill less than 1% of livestock, and that was the whole reason we went ahead and played God in the first place. There's more too, like the fact that wolves are actually scared shitless of people, to the point where they'll avoid buildings, roads, and even the sound of a snowmobile can stress them. Big, bad wolf has only killed less than 40 people in North America, and about 30 of those wow. happened before the 1900s. Meanwhile, wow. it was last year. There's also little fake facts that personally grind my gears, like wolves don't howl at the moon. They howl mostly to communicate. They face the moon because unless you're rallying earthworms, if you're making an announcement, you're probably facing up. They also howl to mark their territory, <laughs> and sometimes they just do it for pack bonding. You gotta, you, you sing with each other, right? I mean, like, look, go into... A, a large space and start singing Bohemian Rhapsody, people will sing it with you. They will. We are the same. Yeah. 
He's like, I got this. And then you got Tumblr's contribution. We can all learn an invaluable leadership lesson from this pack of wolves. The three in front are old and sick. They walk to the front to set the pace. The next five are the strongest. They protect the front side from an attack. The middle group is fully protected. The five behind them are also the strongest. Are also the strongest. Lots of strongest ones. So ten strongest geese. Uh, the, they protect the backside. The last wolf is the leader. He ensures no one is left behind. He keeps the pack tight and on the same path. He is ready to run in any direction to protect his pack. Being a leader is not being in front. It's about taking care of your team. No, actually the opposite. It's the leaders of the pack. You know, the parents that, you know, lead. And unless you're Norman Bates Jr., you wouldn't mm. put your crippled okay. grandmother in front to deal with all the unbroken snow. And I don't know what okay. to say. I don't know why I stopped to read all of that, because it was wrong. None of it was correct. All of that was incorrect information that I stopped to read out loud. Okay, about this, except Hollywood and WAPAD have ruined the way some of y'all think about wolves into the Omegaverse as poke. But yeah, wolves might be the most maligned animal out there, but I will say their PR has gotten way better. Meanwhile, coyotes have been catching more smoke than hot dogs in July. Wolves hate coyotes off principle. Eagles and crows hate them because they fight for the same scraps. Trauma donkeys don't rock with anything canine. And a coyote can breathe and earn a cougar's wrath. And let a bear get a hold of one and shit gonna really get grizzly. Ah. Even Mark Twain's written diss track towards coyotes was the honest to God inspiration for a pain magnet of a looney tune. Oh, nah, but the concern for coyotes wolves have is different. I've shown this clip like 20 times. I'm gonna do it again, because you only need one wolf, maybe two if you're conservative, to get the job done. Do you know what it takes to motivate an entire pack to turn you into past tense? They basically Jesus. Rodney King the Coyote. But don't feel too bad, because Coyote's low-key won in the end. You see, when America was at war with wolves, they were also often coyotes like they were made of oil. But because coyotes are canine cockroaches, the attempts to cancel coyotes oh. only led to more coyotes. The prairie pup apparently has a roll call, a, essentially a census where a female will call out and if she doesn't hear a lot of coyotes back, it'll actually trigger a metabolic change to produce a bigger litter. And one thing they have oh. that wolves don't is coyotes are fusion fission, meaning you can catch them in a pack, but if things ever get critical, they can break apart, split up, and spread out. The reality oh, is, generations dang. of being a wolf's shoe toy prepared coyotes for everything humanity could possibly throw at them. Studies say you can then snap 75% of a coyote population every year for 50 years straight, it still won't dent them. Today, you can find a coyote in every state that isn't Hawaii, and it was humanity's hate boner that Ubered them. And that's why I love yeah, them. Like I course. said, they're alive entirely out of spite. I respect <laughs> game, especially since at one point the wolf population in America was so down bad. Something, something, life finds a way, something, something, now we have koi wolves. In some places, virtually every wolf in the area has coyote DNA in it. Can I remind huh. you that wolves are literally prejudiced towards the very animal they ended up getting Genghis Kong to buy? That's like if Thomas Jefferson was alive to see what would become of his bloodline. And considering you can find a coyote in Burbank, Orlando, and the Dang, Bronx, that was say, like... They won the war, but foxes might have won the game of life. The wild Probably. carnivore with the most real estate on Earth yeah. isn't the leopard. It's not a type of eagle. It's the red fox. You can find foxes anywhere short of a penguin playground, and out of all wild dogs, foxes have the most range. Of course, you have the red, the most well-known fox, but also a lesser-known menace to other foxes. There's Don't be confused, red foxes eviscerate arctics in the wild. It's my personal favorite, the arctic fox. Look at that canine cotton ball go. There's a terminally unamused Tibetan fox. Look at this dude. <laughs> the aforementioned dune puppy, the fennec fox. And how can you forget the cross fox? Which is oh. really just a mutated red fox. But I'm a shout cool. out a shiny when I see one. Foxes were small enough and just Fair. cute enough to dodge the smoke everyone had for coyotes. Which is why foxes are one of the few animals to actually do better in cities, with close to half a million living in the UK. Foxes are basically dogs running cat software. They move yeah. like canine ninjas, they're mostly nocturnal, and they have vertical slits for pupils. And some, like the gray fox, have semi-retractable claws to climb trees. Yeah, foxes are an anomaly. But if foxes are an anomaly, they're jackals awesome though. I love foxes. Conundrum. Jackals are jackals. pretty much old world coyotes and they virtually have the same niche, so I won't go on about that. But I'm explaining right. why I call them a conundrum. As far as we know, there are three species of jackals the black back, the side striped, and the golden jackal. One of these is not like the other. I'm gonna need y'all to lie. Yeah, it, it's the side striped one. What's why does he have a, like, he looks like a llama or something. Again, because this will get confusing. So between these three, the golden jackal isn't even closely related to the other two. In fact, the golden jackal is actually closer to wolves and coyotes. Make sense? 
I hope so, because okay. it only gets more confusing. Okay, so Great. golden jackals are found in Africa and Eurasia, and for a while we assumed they were the same species, but y you know what they say about assuming. Turns out the golden jackal of Eurasia diverged from the wolf coyote common ancestor 1.9 million years ago. The African wow. variety followed suit 1.3 million years in the past. So not only are there about 600,000 years of separation, African jackals are that much closer to wolves. So much that it was never a jackal at all. So now we say Africa has a golden wolf. So, recap, three types okay. of jackals, two types of golden jackals. Golden jackals aren't closely related to the other jackals. One of the two types of golden jackals is actually more related to wolves, and the other is an actual wolf. Also, this has nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to add that jackals took a cue from coyotes. Something, something, Jurassic Bark, something, something, we have jackal dog hybrids. One man bred a jackal dog to sniff out airport explosives. Why didn't I think of that? Next are dingoes. Dang. Dingoes are weird. No, like literally, they're really dingo weird ate my for a baby. dog. Dingoes are freakishly flexible and can turn their heads 180 degrees. They have wrists <gasps> that can rotate like ours to the point where Houndini can unlatch gates and even turn doorknobs. By the way, they aren't just trained to do that. They just looked at the gate and figured it out. Dang, dingoes be built different. They can climb trees. Because of course they can. By the way, don't look up dingo tree, you will regret it. They're the top land predator of Australia, and they have the widest jaws of any canine. Huh, wonder, wonder where they got that from. Ah. Dingoes fill the role the thylacine left behind. Okay. Dingoes also have no body odor and are the main reason a prison steroid bunny chooses waterboarding as a defense tactic. You'd expect a dog molded by Australia to be built different. The only thing stranger is where exactly they came from. Some say dingoes are pet dogs that saw Australia as free real estate and others, they swear dingoes have been here for 10,000 plus years. But after a whole lot of debating, Seems like we finally come to a consensus. Dingoes were more than likely airdropped by sea traveling humans from the islands of Southeast Asia and China some 5,000 years ago, where they stayed okay. isolated from anything canine until European settlers pulled up much later. Before that, dingoes okay. had this relationship with indigenous Australians. Not exactly like pets, but they were chill with each other. After years of plot development, they would become the kangaroo nightmare we know them as today. They've been compared to New Guinea singing dogs, Carolina dogs, Possibly the closest relative, believed to share a common ancestor, aka the Dixie Dingo, probably an Indian East Asian Rose, possible genetic source. Oh, okay. Dogs. And if you look close enough, yeah, I, I can see it. I there is another argument as to whether dingoes are their own thing or just another subspecies of wolf. The way I see it, dingoes aren't from there, but they were brought there, and they've been there long enough to have a defined role in the system. And now you can't tell the history of the country without talking about them. Kind of like. Never mind. Happy Juneteenth. Yeah, but at this point, dingoes are definitely their own thing, which makes people wanting them dead crazy. Basically, dingoes took a page from coyotes and jackals and got busy with the feral Happy dogs Juneteenth. around them. Problem is, some people use that as a loophole to justify murking dingoes on site since they could be like, oh, it's it's a hybrid, so it's not pure, so it's not protected. But contrary to popular belief, pure dingoes come in many colors, and most dingoes tested came back as pure. The way I see oh, it, dang. dingoes earned their spot okay. at the Australian lunch table, even if one really did eat her baby. That's not a joke. A lot of y'all owe this woman an apology. So most canines are obviously social, and like I said, coyotes go with whatever's most convenient. But there's one dog that weaponizes the power of friendship better than arguably any other animal. And that is, of course, the Afri- oh, 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 excuse me. The African wild dog. <laughs> Can y'all see that? Yeah, there. They have a put you on a shirt rate Cute. of 80%. Most of because they're like ah, homicide hounds scary. running on Duracell. They don't get tired. They can easily run anything into exhaustion. But it's their teamwork that makes them OP. African dogs hunt in a relay form with different dogs taking turns leading the chase. And once they ah. make the kill, African wild dogs might be the only animals that let their pups eat first. Painted hounds are so down for each other that the hunt doesn't even happen unless the group votes on it. And they vote by sneezing. Get enough sneezes and the gazelle's fate gets sealed. Obviously, the lead dogs vote counts for the most, but enough under the outcome if they stick together. Achoo. Before they hunt, wild dogs have these ceremonies they do as a ritual that's pretty much a predatory pep rally. Their bond is so strong that they're they excited. Kind of wild up. dogs getting so depressed from the separation from their pack that the grief literally kills them. And if oh. a pup ever goes missing, the pack will put everything to the side and spend days looking for it. The loyalty of the African wild dog has no equal. But it might have a close second. Doles are the forgotten wild dogs of Asia, both literally because they're related, but also because they too get carried by numbers. They usually hunt light work like deer, boars, and rodents. The felony foxes have been recorded bringing down buffalo, gars, and there's even one case of d holes apparently erasing a young elephant. The dog no bigger than a border collie has even shifted tigers and jumped leopards. You can't Dang. pull that off without some world-class communication, and communication is what doles do best.
get a whistle, it helps them keep track of each other in the dense jungle. That's but also really makes cool. them sound like a black owned smoke detector. Okay, it's 2024. Can we please let this joke die? They'll also pee while doing a handstand to mark their territory. That has nothing to do with anything. I just thought it was fun. So Africa has wild dogs. Australia gets fun, that is North fun. America and Europe both got wolves. And as you know, Asia gets the whistler. So what, did South America get left out? Of course not. This is a bush dog. Not the rarest. <gasps> it's a good bear. the most underrated. We don't know that much about them. We even thought they went extinct for a minute. They for real look more like a stubby wolverine or a Latino Tasmanian devil. But it's because they're perfect or for their life in the bear. dense jungle near water. And boy, do they love that water. They're the only wild dogs with webbed feet. And not only can they dive, they have no problems catching Catching bodies of water, they'll Dang. usually go prey to water where another bush beast will be waiting. Speaking of prey, they'll usually violate rodents like agoutis or capybara, but they've also been known to tap out 500 plus pound tapers. Now, if you've been paying attention, you might know the bush dog's closest relative. This is a short-eared dog, and it is not the closest relative. They're another dog we know almost nothing. <laughs> he he pulled a, he pulled a John Oliver on me there. What about? Almost everything we do know about him comes from a man accidentally buying one at a marketplace and ecologist Renata Lette Pittman getting a hold of him to study. What we do know is the females are way bigger than the males. They don't hit puberty until they're three, which is pretty weird for a dog. And one of the reasons you've probably never seen one before is they spend most of their lives in armadillo burrows. But yeah, the closest relative of the bush dog isn't its short-eared understudy. It's, yep, this is the main wolf. Even though it's not a wolf or a fox, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's it really just its own thing. Every group has that one weird member. For birds, it's owls. For big cats, it's for sure the non-boring snow leopard. And for dogs, it's absolutely this slender puppy. Don't let the thigh boots fool you. A motivated Maine wolf can hit over 40 miles per hour. Between that and the fact that they literally have a black morph, best believe the canine uh. Chanel boots has contributed more to cryptid culture than anyone realizes. Yeah, I bet. what they could possibly be running from. Probably the law. Maned wolf urine smells so much like Snoop Dogg salad. They've gotten zoos raided by police. If God created the world in six days, he started freestyling on a Sabbath and came out with this canine casserole. They're the only canines that are completely solitary. They're the only ones with a mane. They fiend so much for apples, it got named after them. And yeah, the ankle biters are still waiting to get their legs back. I mean, they even sound like an identity crisis. Oh. I wouldn't expect a skunk scented, vertically gifted, apple eating Waluigi hyena to sound any I've different. I've seen this video. But I never would have guessed what they sounded like. <laughs> they sound like the little chickens that, like, you know, the when you squeeze them, the little rubber chickens. I still think that the uh, sound that, like, shocked me the most was baby alligators because they sound like, like, blasters. They sound like little laser guns. Don't be confused, it may be raccoon coated, but it's closer to a fox in face paint. The raccoon dog, also known as a tanuki, is proof that once again, same test, similar solution, homie, you know it's convergent evolution. They also inspired the Baki Danuki, a supernatural creature in Japanese mythology known for shape shifting. And for other things I can't talk about. In real life, raccoon oh, dogs great. are the only canines that hibernate, which is fitting because they might have caused the entire planet to hibernate in 2020, allegedly. Also, <laughs> they Nuke. caused it. Tanuki. Oh dang. Okay. Tanuki. Tom Nuke the Tanuki. Anyway, only two zoos in America have raccoon dogs, so if you want to see them IRL, you're kind of out of luck. But at least they're not in danger. Not like the last canine here. The Ethiopian wolf isn't just Africa's most limited carnivore. It's the rarest canine on Earth, with less than 500 in stock. The thing with them is they're really good at living off the rodents living in the Afro Mountains. They've even learned to hunt near grass-eating gelatas for better results. But Ethiopian wolves are also specialists, which means they can really only function in one place. So you're actually looking at the panda of dogs, except they're actually three times rarer, with habitat loss, getting smoked by farmers, and oh, overgrazing no. from competing cattle not exactly helping them out. They're actually pretty cool if you get to watch a couple videos of them, but if we don't get our shit together soon, videos are gonna be all we have. And even though they're not technically hanging by a thread, wolves are still getting done dirty. They're still seen as pests in a lot of places and often murked on sight. Or you got wolf dogs bought to be a flex, only to be predictably thrown to the streets. It's a good yeah. thing we got places like the Howling Woods Farm in New Jersey. It's a sanctuary for wolf dogs that were abandoned, only to be given a second chance at life. That absolute unit, his name's Orion. They all have different He's a high content wolf dog with a Malamute. It's a lovable menace. I love that he has started putting in um, like a lot of reserves and, you know, 
sanctuaries and stuff into the ends of these videos just to be like there's places that you can go to there's places that you can donate to there's places that you can help i really like that he is putting putting some of those things in his videos different combinations of wolf with different personalities some are 30 40 percent wolf some are up to 95 as you can see i don't discriminate even serious the tripod got a lot of love don't tell the others but She's my favorite. I really feel like if we had more places like this, wolves would be so much better just off the PR. And it's not just wolves. Howling Woods has coyote dogs too, although. He was discovered playing with neighbor dogs, captured, relocated, returned to his place. Oh. He, he can't really go in with them. This isn't sponsored, by the way. They're not paying me or anything. I just really believe in what they're doing. And if you do too, the link to donate to their sanctuary will be in the description. I'll be personally go to pledging his video a decent to do amount. That. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water. Tell your father you appreciate him. Mom too, I ain't forget about y'all. Make sure you spread the word. The wolf word, and I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Okay, great. <laughs> the African what? Hello, 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 hello. Hey, girl. The camera can't even see you. That's oh, okay. We use this for bloopers. Why are you always giving me your butt, dude? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know where that smell smells been. <laughs> yeah. You got your camera time. Good girl. Yeah. Oh, what a good baby. All right. Well, I'm also actually, you know what? I'm going to put the link in my description also, I think. So, because it's not sponsored by him. Um, so that way, you know, maybe we can maximize the number of people who go. I think that could be fun. So they're obviously not going to, they're not sponsoring me either. But I'm going to put my, put it in mine too, just to, just to have it there. Um, and you know obviously go and check out the uh casual geographics channel he's got so many good videos and i've done very few of them so go check his stuff out let me know what else i should react to by him in the future um you know check out the uh animal rescue um and enjoy the rest of your day